what you did wrong. I will say yes, yes. off the bat. Yes. But I'll leave yes. it to our speakers. Um, yes. It's very possible you've messed up yes. in a lot of ways. Yes. And you didn't even know. Yes. This is where humility comes in on this journey. That's right. You know, there, there are many things we thought was right. It was the way we were raised. Hmm. Or it was what environment gave us. Hmm. But in dealing with each person we come across, it may have been wrong. Remember when we were talking, we said, you have four children, you have three children, you have even two, you have twins. Their personalities are different. The, the opportunity we have from here going forward is now asking Holy Spirit to show us each child yeah. to know them for who they are not the lumping together. Mm. Mm. Who is Jane? Who yeah. is Paul? Mm. What do you have for Jane? Can you show me? Even if they are 50, mm. how can I be part of what you want? The key word here is co-parenting with God. That's it's right. not late. Jane is now 50 has had children and I did stuff I didn't even know I did. Dear Father, open my understanding to how I can still help this 50 year old mm. be what you have mm. for them. So mm. it takes humility to say, I didn't do it all well. Something key that she mentioned, which I want to kind of piggyback on as an African woman that has helped so many people I've had to release myself from my children's decision that's right because I felt it was my fault they took the decisions they took it's not that's not, that's not. they are grown they've taken their decisions I may not agree with it but my joy is to still stand in this, as an intercessor and cry out to God, not what they want, not what I want. Your plan for them must happen. So this conversation this morning is not about guilt. Yeah. It's not about whether you got it right or you got it wrong. Even for the people who got it right till this point, yeah. you still yeah. need the Lord to keep yeah. getting it right. Yeah. Um, I hope that helps. Yeah. The two things that I that I that I put here, Eli. Let me quickly do this. Um, mm -hmm. I said we need to be we need to be respectful, and we need to build trust. Yeah, trust is out the window. You have to build trust. You 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 have to you have to you have to, and you have to do it in a way that is not manipulative as well. Yeah, a way that you are not making it about yourself because it really isn't about you. It really isn't about you because we are talking about missed opportunities here. You were the one that missed the opportunity. You know, it's a different conversation if we're talking about the child side of things. We're, we're looking inwardly now. It's ourselves as parents and on this journey. So we are respectful of who they are now. You respect their opinions. You, you, you might not necessarily agree with it, but you respect it. Is that the stand you want to make? So they, they, they make a decision that you totally disagree with. Guess what? They have a right to make their decisions. You have a right to support. But I'm hoping that we are, we've been trained enough by Holy Spirit to be able to go to the place of prayer and help them navigate the decision without having to open up our mouths. You know, we've talked a lot. We've talked at them a lot. So actually, if we now get the opportunity to be quiet and to pray more than talk, we will see the trajectory going upwards. You know, because at that point, and let them see. You see, let them know that that's what you're doing as well. 
Because that way, you are building capacity within them. You see, at, that, at this stage that they are at, when they are gone and left the house, it really isn't about what you say anymore. But it's, like, it's about the life that you're living now that they can see. They can disconnect from your words, but from the lifestyle that you live. And are they seeing a life of prayer, prayerful parenting from afar? Have they seen a life that is submitted in reality to God? Because the more of that they see, they may never tell you. They will pick on it and they will use it. Now, what will my dad do? Oh, I know. My dad will pray. What will my mom do? I trust my mom will search scriptures first before she prays. Maybe I should try it. They may never tell you. They may never tell us. But for them to be able to do that, that's the joy that we have as a parent. That's the joy that we have as a parent. I want to quickly say, walk around something. If you're in a situation now that the relationship at home is fractious and indeed may be toxic and it's really bad, because there are many, many, many situations like that, I can identify. I can identify. And it really seems as if there's no way out. That's why I read the scriptures that I read out. You first haven't done your repentance. And this is important. You need to be repentant. Haven't done that. You now need to trust God implicitly. That's one. Secondly, you need how the capacity to forgive, and then the ability to turn the other cheek. All of those things that Christ did for you and I, you now present itself, the opportunity presents itself to play it out. So when they are raging and they are ranting, and words are coming out that are hurtful, because hurtful words will come out, that is truth. When the words that are hurtful are coming out, you go back into your own closet, shut your door, gather all those words together, nullify them, and speak peace into your home. No wonder the Bible says to pursue peace. It, you, it comes a time when you are pursuing it. Don't deadly. You know, you are not letting go until peace reigns in my home. I'm not letting go. I am not rolling over for no devil. Until peace reigns in this home. Until peace reigns. So no matter what is thrown at you in the place of anger and hurt, go back to the place of prayer. Now, if, please hear me, if you think the situation would need for a therapist to come in and you know in your heart that that's what would work, by all means, go for it. I would just say, if you can get a Christian thera therapist, better. That will see it from the light of the gospel. That will see it from the light of Christ. But that way, you get someone that is omnidiacal, someone that is not emotionally invested. You see, because you are emotionally invested, you can't, you are not the best place to handle it anyway. And I'm not, a pastor might not be able to do it. The mediation might be from an uncle or an aunt or someone that this child respects, that they already have a relationship with, that they can listen to. I want that to be objective as well. To bring that initial calm into that um, strenuous relationship. Because I know it can get really heated. Really, really heated. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot to be able to step back. It takes a lot. And you will need to fully yourself be trusting in God. That's why I did the, are we all on the same page? Because for this one, this is the way we know. It has to be. We're doing it God's way. We have to implicitly trust him. 
remembering and reminding ourselves that this child, at the end of the day, I was just a vessel that God needed to bring in here. It's God that has a purpose for this child. So this child has to fulfill that purpose and destiny. I'm just walking along with the Holy Spirit to ensure that that happens. Yeah? And then take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. When you have done all that you can to stand and you are in that right place with God, don't let anyone guilt trip you. Don't let anyone, any child, emotionally manipulate you. If you have your right standing with Christ and you know that you do, don't be subject to that guilt. No. It's not for you to carry anymore. It's not for you to carry anymore. It's not for you to carry anymore. Yeah? And then understand when to actually just stop and just pray. Just zip it and pray. You know? So they know when they are ready, they will come to you. And when they do come, you are not sat on the judgment throne of Moses. Right? Anyway, you would have left that in the place of repentance anyway. So you can you can accept with open hands, you know, and minister from a healed place. So that ultimately this relationship can flourish and lose on. Just like the father wants it to. This is what I have. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. It, it's been awesome. I've learned uh, so much. I really wish, because we're 10 or 5, uh, just to yes. be respectful of your time, um, I want to just say something here, and we will shut it down if you don't have any questions. I know that uh, this topic, we, there's no way we can exhaust the weight of it in one meeting in an hour. However, um, we encourage you, look out. There's one thing that I know the biggest and most common parenting um, mistakes or that most parents, you hear most parents talk about is time. I wish I spent more time with my children. So we've kind of cut that out to be one of the things we're going to look at um, in the next few months. We're also going to look at um, parenting alone, divorce, parenting alone, the death of a, a family member. But then we just look out for the one on time. How do we spend time with our children? Now, as we close out, we're going to invite Mama to pray, but I want to leave you with something that uh, uh, these three words is key as you journey with your with journey on your parenting journey and live in this room, uh, this space where we're this shared space that guilt, conviction, and regrets right? Remember, guilt is never from God. That if you're feeling guilty for mistakes or anything of such, it's not from God. Conviction comes from God. That's the Holy Spirit will convict you. Now, when it comes to guilt, it's a closed door. Remember that. It's a closed door. Conviction is an open door. That means it gives you a chance to retrace your, your steps and partner with God. Let's get it right. Now, when it comes to regret, regret says, I am it. But remember, you're not defined by your mistakes. So remember that if God, uh, Psalm 103 says um, that as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him, that he remembers, right? He remembers who we are and, and he looks at us, that the heart of God for our flaws, and if you read Exodus 34, that he's a father that shows compassion and mercy for our transgressions, our iniquity, our bentness, right? God's uh, uh, love and mercy is so, is so stronger than his judgment. So if you're judging yourself, that's pride. That's the enemy. That God has called us that bring the flaws, bring the mistakes, bring the uncertainties, bring the years that have been lost. He's outside of time. That God can work his purpose even out of our brokenness. That no matter where you are, the big picture, he's the hero of our story. And your parenting, your marriage, even the environment where the children are, they are all part of his redemptive plan. And through the Bible, we will see 
where and remember the idea of this functional family did not start with us it started from creation and if you take an example from the samuel where his mother and father were not there he was living in a home with a priest that was going blind and with wayward children right and you can look at a joseph that parents were not they came from also a dysfunctional family mother was gone father and 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 sibling rivalry but god was there so the goal is to go back to God and ask God to help you like I do every day um, and trust God that we're stewards and He and, and let this become a part of his redemptive plan where he gets the glory out of our story. So thank you, Pastor Funke. We're so grateful. Look out for our next topic next month on how to spend those time so that we don't have to sit down the road that I wish I spent more time. I'm also working on that because as a parent, the solo parent in partnership with God, it gets really hard. Honestly, that's just my transparent moment to navigate four of them. So, and, and have to take care of myself, like Pastor Funke said, and how do I pour uh, if I'm an empty cup? So, so I, I, this is near home for me. Look out for that. I want to learn more on the timing issue. So you will see Pastor Funke again, and I next month, look out for us where we're going to talk about how to navigate the years of manage the time. So we're going to, when we come back next month, we're looking at both the older generation and the younger generation. So we want you to fill the house when we come back next month. Thank you, Pastor Funke. Ma. God bless you, man. Yes. Over to you, man of God, if you would pray yourself. Thank you. Pastor Talani. Well, when you said woman of God, there are like 200 of us here. So I didn't know oh, okay. right? <laughs> Mama Pastor Talani. <laughs> One here is a woman and a man of God. So yes. it's a joy to have had you. Let's share a brief word of prayer together. Father, as we go, we thank you for laughing.